go. Okay, this is our BT-1 model. If you'll step with me up here, I'm going to turn the machine on and let it start booting up. And while it's doing that, we'll take a look inside of the chamber. Nice large chamber with five electrodes to process on. These are 21 by 21 active area. Uh, this is a non-temperature controlled unit. We make them with temperature control as well. Uh, this is the door and the viewport. You can see from the inside the seal. We'll go ahead and close the door now. And if you'll step right up close, zoom in on the uh, screen. You can see this is our start screen here. What we want to do, I'm going to walk you through what we have to do before we run these machines. We'll enter this, go into the configuration mode, which is only available when you first start the machine up. This is the configuration screen. We can do a gas configuration. This particular machine is set up for three gases and it also has three mass flow controllers. So we can set that up here and we can tell it what type of gas we're using and the correction factors for the gas. The next thing we're going to look at is the timer. The timers give you an alarm, time for the alarm. I don't want it to ring for 15 seconds. That's way too long for me. So I'm going to put in five seconds. Enter, just like that. Gas stabilization is when the gas comes on before the RF. Atmospheric vent is the amount of time that the valve will open to bring the chamber up to atmospheric pressure. The purge vent is the uh, purges the, the any noxious gases. The vent delay is just to keep the uh, vent from coming on while the pump is still in, engaged. Uh, we'll exit this screen. We go to vacuum configuration on this particular one. We can have multiple types of vacuum controllers. We can set set points where we actually start the process. We have the option of selecting a blower on this machine. This one does not have one, nor does it have a dry pump. We also have this set up so that we'll give you a set point alarm timer. If it does not reach a set point within a certain period of time, it will let you know. We can also, if it does not, if it uh, achieves a higher threshold than we would like to have, it can also alarm on that. Uh, RF configuration. This is where we tell the software what is connected to it as far as RF generator. On this machine, it has a 600 watt RF generator. Next screen is our temperature configuration. This one does not have temperature control. I'm not going to push the button because it will give me an alarm because there's nothing connected to it that it's looking for. Uh, miscellaneous can collect, connect, miscellaneous screen. This is where we can select cycle off, where, uh, where it skips the cycle off command so that it actually just vents the chamber when it's done with its uh, job. We can skip the purge, which we normally don't do because we want to purge any noxious gases outside. We can change the time from minutes to seconds. Uh, this particular software is for multiple machines, so we have to tell if this is on one of our BT-1 machines. And then we enter our password levels, and we also have a runtime meter that you can clear if you have password on this machine. Uh, from there, we're going to exit this. So of course, we want to save anything that we've changed. Then we exit. Then we can go to the sequence ec edit. We can enter, and this allows us to take and write a sequence. I have several sequences in there, but we'll write a very quick, simple one. I'm going to put in some time. And I'm going to put in, oh, say, three minutes. That's plenty of time for this demonstration. I'm going to call it uh, CDE, just for a quick name. So we've got one. I'm going to enter in there. We're going to give it 400 watts of power. And we're going to select a gas. This one has O2. And, uh, excuse me, click again. And it actually will tell you how much gas you can flow on that particular channel. Uh, for the second channel, we're going to change uh, that to CF4. Select CF4. It tells you I can only do 89 CFM on that controller. So we'll go in here and we'll select, uh, say, 100 cc's of oxygen and, oh, about 10 cc's of CF4. And I think we've got everything there, so we're going to save this. We'll go back to the previous screen, which is, you can see we now have our, our uh, process in there. We'll exit once more, come out to the main screen where we first came in, then go to the operation screen. This is what the operator will see when he comes to work. So he starts it up and he goes and turns on the vacuum pump, turns on the RF generator puts it in standby mode and this will always start up with the very first process that we loaded in there which on my in this particular machine is brand new I have a burn-in process but I'm gonna go load my process we just wrote which is the CDE we see it's all here the 400 watts 100 cc's 10 cc's and we're gonna load that and as you can see it loads it in the main screen here now we're gonna go ahead and put this in plasma at that point in time, you go to a different screen. This screen here will show you actual gas flows. It'll show you your forward and reflected RF, show you the vacuum levels in the chamber, and gives you a graphical representation of what's going on. So while it's pumping down now, I'm going to walk around and give you a quick tour of the rest of the machine. We're going to come around here on the right-hand side. And at the very bottom, 
Down here you can see this is our PLC control, all of our nice neat wiring, your main contactors, this is where your power is coming in, this particular unit is running on 208 three phase. Uh, you can see it's very neat and tidy. Up above here, you can see this is one of the types of uh, vacuum controllers or vacuum sensors that we have. It's a thermocouple style, and that's the readout of it actually dropping down, and it also reads out on the front. So let's step around to the other side. On this side of the machine, you really can't see it too well here, but this is the matching network. This is, this is where the uh, RF generator feeds to. From this point, it goes into the chamber, into our electrodes, and there's a controller for the matching network on top of it. Down below here, this is our gas board. On this gas board, you can see there are three green boxes. Those are our mass flow controllers, and these are the vacuum pump purge flows, so we can actually sweep the nasty gases out of the vacuum pumps as we're working. So I just heard the click, so that means that we're introducing gas in the chamber, so we'll go back around the front. And as you can see on the screen, we now have gas flow. We have an actual flow of 99.6 of the O2 and 9.9 .9 on the CF4. You can see there's a graphical representation here of a plasma happening, a count up timer and a count down timer, so you can have it either way you want. You can see our vacuum levels here, they're at 252, 252 millitor. And if we look inside of the chamber here, we can see that there is actually a plasma going. Right now it's a little on the pink side, there's some atmospheric nitrogen from the first startup, but as it goes it will turn a very nice blue color, which is our typical color for this machine, running O2 and CF4. And that concludes the tour of our BT1, except for, let's see, did we see the pump? Yeah. Let's go take a look at the pump. Looks a little ugly right now because it's actually in production, but this is what our vacuum pumps look like. This is the blank off valve for the uh, that separates the uh, vacuum cha chamber from the vacuum pump. This is a mist filter. What it does is it coalesces the oil mist so that it flows back into the pump and saves your expensive uh, oxygen style oil. We also equip these equip, we equip these with uh, a high quality uh, oil filter so that the oil has a much longer life. One of the things we do do is uh, design these for a long life. And that basically concludes our tour. Thank you.